the place that you dream about is where we are right now. If you can imagine a perfect flat scenario in a pristine environment, a million miles from anywhere, and you've got literally thousands and thousands of bonefish, lots of permit, lots of big trevelis. But you have this incredible place that's just, I mean, you look at it from 36,000 feet going over and you look down and you just go, well, that is just, that looks just like magnificent. What is that place? It's called Alphonse Island in the Seychelles. And if you dream about endless, epic everything, well, then this is the place. One hours in flight from Florida to New York to Dubai to Mahe Seychelles isn't far enough. There's one more flight to go, 45 minutes across the Indian Ocean to Alphonse Island. The Republic of Seychelles, located off the east coast of Africa, It is a constellation of islands, and Alphonse Island is the star. Fly fishing is a big part of Seychelles tourism, which makes this five-star lodge a key player in the economy and the environment. Life is bright on Alphonse Island. Water as clear as a window critters like crayons. The thing with Seychelles is that it's underdeveloped, so uh, all the outer islands are still pristine. They're untouched, they're not overfished. You can see by the nature and the marine life, it's exquisite. Uh, fish life is incredible. It's a fantastic experience for me to just see this fishery just get better and better and better. So the fish are important, and I think the fish come first, really. There are not many places where you literally can walk through fish. You have to listen to the science. and In order to listen to the science, you've got to have it there. It all starts with small projects, and over the years, we've managed to increase it to significant projects. Keith approached me about trying to develop a better understanding about the GT fishery here in the Alphonse Island Group. He's got such a vested interest in how a very pristine area such as this Alphonse Island Group supports all this ecotourism, and without it, the business goes away. I think what helps it be so pristine is that it is far away from humanity. You don't feel the weight of humanity here. You feel the weight of nature, and you're immersed in it. You become part of it when you're here. Alphonse Island is comprised of three atolls, underwater volcanoes with coral growing on top. 
Here we stand on a sandy flat on a mountaintop as bonefish and a purple storm pass through. We went from having a great bone fishery to having the best bone fishery in the world, and I mean, it's pretty insane. There are days out there when you can literally catch 20 big singles, and they're all close to 60 centimeter plus fish, which are big bones by any standard. Look at the markings, look at that lovely zebra stripe on the back. The classic, the banana. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do a slow release. There he goes, nice. Ah, yes, the African sun reappears and the light switch is flipped on St. Francois. Here we go. One of the best tips I ever had about spotting bonefish was one of the great Keys guides said to me once a while back, if you release a bonefish, watch it until it, your eye can't see it anymore. And it trains your brain and your eyes to see right into the distance. When the fish disappears, your brain automatically can turn it around. You can actually start seeing the fish coming towards you at distance. But one of the best tips I've ever had to spot bonefish. A Florida Keys tip for a Seychelles guide. It shows that even though 9,000 miles separates them, the flats of the world are in fact one. Flats ecosystems are not unique to the Seychelles. Flats occur in the Florida Keys, in the Bahamas, in Belize, Central America, and they exist because of this unique connection between the coral reefs the seagrass and the lagoons, and in some places you have mangroves. The connections between these different habitats in this ecosystem are a unique balance and a homeostasis that rely on each other to produce this great biodiversity. St. Francois is a crescent-shaped atoll 10 miles south of Alphonse. It boasts 10,000 acres of flats and is limited to 12 anglers per day. We arrive on a very high tide, on a spring high tide, to a very famous locality called East Knoll. It's a focal point for all the bonefish because on a high tide, they need shallow water to be safe. So they shoal up. I mean, we're talking, you know, thousands and thousands of fish in enormous numbers. We're on. And when the tide goes out, the grills and umbrellas move in. Flats lunch, an Alphonse staple. 
Even the bones know it's time to eat. Instead of seagulls eyeing your meal, it's, you know, one of the world's most sought after game fish. Next up, a dust up with the fork-tailed devil, the milkfish. Gotta eat. Yeah, we hooked up. <laughs> Every year, Alphonse accounts for more than 90% of the milkfish caught and released on planet Earth. And every angler that's partly responsible for that 90% paid dearly for it. Oh, broken. The first milkfish ever caught in flower was caught here. The guides that have been with us for 18 years love it. It's part of their heart, so they're part of all the conservation efforts that they move forward in. It's basically tarpon fishing. You're jumping the fish. You're not always going to land them. And I say it's just incredibly hard to hook a milk fish, and it's even more difficult to land one. Nice. Well done. Yep, over. Got him. Yes. Well done. Yay. Well done, Kyle. <laughs> Epic. That thing. Okay. Such a hydrodynamic, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, Carl. Look at that thing. The milks, they eat crustaceans, but they micro crustaceans. And then, of course, algae. And St. Francois is unique because it has a very gentle tide and on the white sand, in the warmer months of the year, the spirulina algae grows in profusion. So there's this green or yellowish color spirulina, which is very nutritious. And the milks come in en masse and they feed up on the spirulina. That's the fly, basically. We imitated the spirulina weed that the milks are feeding on. That was how the fly basically evolved. And if it's presented in the right way, the fish will eat it. the devil fish. They jump, they get very big, they're as mean as anything. They fight incredibly hard and because of the physiology of the fish, they're highly efficient swimmers, they're very highly efficient at breathing, so they don't get tired like normal fish. They're brutal. It's the devil we've been searching for, but it's hard to tell where Wayne is, heaven or hell. It's a time there, guys. I lay me to the ground Can't stop, can hear the sound I'm calling you Heading out, heading out I'm Waiting for it, it's such a dirty trick, it's coming Unbelievable this bloody mantis is driving me mad, yeah. It's a beast, eh? It's a serious fish, eh? <laughs> One hour and 35 minutes. 
Look at that, guys. Stuff, <laughs> Thank you, Cutter. All right, yeah. keep Look it wet. Okay. Take nice, awesome. Here we go. Well done, guys. Nice, guys. Awesome. This is a beautiful fish. At last, the main event. No, not yet. Go, 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 go. The apex predator. The fish that puts heads in the Alphonse beds. The giant trevally. Giant Trevally, the GT, or Jeet, as their friends call them. The most coveted game fish on the Seychelles flats. Apart from sharks, they are the apex predators. They play an important role in terms of structuring coral reef ecosystems and atoll ecosystems. GTs are such an allure, and yet they also rely heavily on healthy bonefish populations, the pristine nature of the atolls themselves. We started talking about mount pressure, we're putting on a different species of fish. We decided that the best thing to do would be to start with the giant trevally, because that is one of the main reasons why people come to the Seychelles. And I think we were quite surprised that the recapture rate is low. So we've got a very healthy population of GTs here. The hunt for jeets has been fruitless thus far. All you can do is wait for the next window of opportunity to open. That would be a pushing tide in the late afternoon. You often find them pre-swimming. Our lagoon is like a series of lochs, basically, and they drain out through different channels on the dropping tide, and then again on the push, they, it comes back the other way. So you're fishing the channels for jeets, you're staking out on channels, which is very effective because the jeets have got to come onto that finger flat and weight it in a groove. So you stake out for them, you wait for them. It was like a jolt. These two GTs rolled right in front of the boat. Kyle just lobbed that fly, and then everything just went to hell in a handbasket after that. It's the biggest GT of Kyle's life. Ready? The rod breaks. He'll have to improvise until whichever comes next, success or failure. No, not yet. Go, 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 go. Yeah, how close it was to losing this rod and reel and everything, bro. Bring the line here. My hands are camping so hard. I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's your biggest one. Yeah. <laughs> That's my biggest cheat ever, bro. <laughs> to see him handle that GT, get it to hand, and then to be able to put a transmitter in that fish. And as soon as we let that fish go, the minute it goes by the first receiver, we're collecting data. <laughs> Once there's more footage than needed and the pressure's off, things loosen up. The greenhorns chuck some flies. Just nailed it. And your guide casually lands a pending world record Indo-Pacific permit. Awesome. Awesome. 
you can effectively practice conservation with every fish you encounter. For every fish, they can make a difference. That, to me, empowers them. It empowers anglers to say, listen, if I can make a difference for each fish that I encounter, then I'm contributing to the sustainability of this resource. Respecting the land, protecting the water. The work here doesn't stop. There's always more to accomplish. In a sense, Alphonse Island is like the horizon. You can't reach it. You can only aim for it and admire it as you go.